In this presentation, we're going to record the payroll checks for the second month of operations with the use of the bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see the payroll checks go through with the bank feeds and then allocate those to our financial statements. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports, going down to the reports on the left hand side. We'll open up the balance sheet, open up the income statement. Starting with the balance sheet, we're going to open that up, go to the tab up top, right click on that tab up top, duplicate it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left, do the same thing for the income statement, back to the reports down below on the left hand side, then opening up the income statement, the PNL, the profit and loss, right click on that tab up top, duplicate it. Then we'll go back to the balance sheet. We're going to be adjusting the dates on the balance sheet back to 2019. Those are the dates or that's the year that we have been uploading data for. So then I'm going to update that. Then we're going to go down and I'm going to uh, say this show detail because I want to see like the detail then I'm gonna go back to the prior tab and I'm gonna put this back to 2019 we're gonna update that report and then we're gonna go down below and show the detail there as well then we're gonna to go to the first tab back to the first tab over here and we're gonna be considering our transactions so we're gonna go into the accounting transactions open up our transactions and now we want to look at the two transactions that are gonna be the payroll items uh, that we're going to pay for this now this is another area where you got to you got to be a little careful on on how you're going to set up your system within the accounting within the accounting software you'll recall that you could add payroll within the accounting software but it's going to be an, an up fee so you'd have to pay more to process the payroll within the system if you process the payroll within the system then you can have more complex reporting of course within the, the detail of payroll payroll adds a lot of uh, you know detail it also has kind of an accrual component because you need to withhold for the payrolls and, de and deal with the withholding information on it so it would look or you could have payroll processed outside by by like an adp or a paychecks or something like that they can help you to process the payroll give the information for the payroll and then you're going to enter it into the system and you might even enter it into the system the easiest way would be basically just a cash basis method to enter it into the system possibly then asking your accountant at the end of the year to do an adjustment for uh, taxes or for um uh, financial reporting so that might look something like this if you had it and that's what we'll do here so if you had some like a, like an ADP or a paychex doing the pay the payroll, then it would look something like this, right? This is the normal payroll. They would have to give this information to the employee. They have to give the employee every payment, not only the check, which we're imagining, for example, for Adam here would be the three thousand five thirty nine, but we, they all we also have to give them through, and this would be provided by our third party payroll that we're imagining here, the amount that they earned total gross pay. And the amount that we took out of their paycheck, which will include federal withholdings, which will be Social Security, Medicare, and the, the federal income tax that are their taxes, the employee taxes, resulting in the net check, the amount that's actually then going to come out of our checking account to pay that employee. And the same here for Erica, right? This is the amount that would come out. Now, if you were to record this on a journal entry type of format, it would look something like this. We'd have to have payroll expense for the gross amount. And then the liability, this is kind of like the accrual component, the liability that we owe, we're going to put on the books at the point in time we process payroll that we're going to later pay. And then the paycheck that actually comes out of our, our uh, checking account. If we're looking at bank feeds, then all we're going to see is the check that comes out of our checking account. So, so that means that if we're going to record this on our system, how are we going to do this? We could use a journal entry. We could use, look at that transaction, record the whole journal entry here. Or we might say, hey, look, I'm just going to stay on a cash basis and we would just record the net check to something like payroll expense. And then, well, when would we pick up the difference? When would we pick up this this part when we pay it right? at a later point in time? We'll have to pay this and we'll say maybe the, our, our payroll company will deal with that. Then that will come through our system, payroll paying off the payroll taxes. It's not going to happen until a little bit after the payroll period. That's why the timing will be different, but we'll pay it at some point and then we'll record the payment. When we pay it, credit in cash, it'll come through the bank feeds, and then we'll debit the payroll expense for that amount. So we'll basically have two, two transactions at different times rather than recording it at the point in time the payroll was processed. And we'll also have to pay this amount, our portion of the payroll taxes, which again, we, we could record on the books at the point in time we process payroll, or we can wait till it's paid. And then we could just see it clear the bank 
and we can just record it at that point in time. And then you can see there's a timing difference, but that would be a cash basis method that you could basically use. And then again, talk to your accountant at the end of the year to help you out with taxes reporting and any accrual adjustments. So that's one method that uh, you can consider. And that's what we'll basically think about doing here. We got the net check then for our employees, Adam uh, and Erica. We're assuming that uh, that this got processed through uh, the payroll system and, and all their, their information. We're just going to record the net check then. Also note that Adam here has two checks, I think, right? And that happened that cleared this month and didn't have one last month. Why is that? Uh, it, it's possible if you actually wrote a check and gave it to our employees that Adam maybe held on to the check. So, so notice if you're on a cash basis and you're actually giving physical checks as opposed to electronic transfers, then it might, there might be two checks in one period because you had to wait till it cleared. And that's, and that's what's happening here. So we have Adam having two checks, not that we paid him two times this month. We paid him one time, but the Adam didn't deposit the check last time. Not until this time did they actually deposit the check, right? So then we're going to go into to this item and uh, categorize it. So I'm just going to click on it now and I'm, I'm going to go to the to the side area and I'm going to say plus or, or copy that and then I'm going to categorize this as payroll. So I'm going to say payroll and I'm going to say salaries and wages and then I'm going to save that and then I'm going to add the vendor. I'm going to set Adam up as a vendor. Now note it's saying here, look, you have another transaction that's with Adam. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to do it individually because I want to add the vendor here. So I'm going to say add the vendor. This is an employee. You might say like, well, this is an employee. Why are you adding as a vendor? But we're, we're not using the payroll setup here. So I want to add it as a vendor so that I can just basically run the report uh, like any other vendor for people that we're paying in this case. So I'm going to add add them as a vendor so I can basically run our report to see kind of the cash flow transaction of the checks that went out to this employee. So I'm going to set it up as a vendor. I'm going to close this back out and then I'm going to go back over. I'm going to refresh the page on the first page. So then it'll show up as the vendor on the drop down. So then if we go back down on this side, uh, we're going to add the vendor again and then I'm going to select the drop down and we should then see Adam. There, There's Adam. We found Adam. He's right there. All right. And then I'm going to check that off. And then we have Adam again down here. So Adam, another check for Adam. So this should be easier to do. I'm going to click on it this time so we can add the vendor as we go, which should be an easy process. So I'm going to select the drop down. This is going to be payroll. So payroll salaries, salaries and wages. And then we're going to say that uh, I'm going to add the vendor. And we're just going to say that this is Adam. All right. And then I'm going to save that. Note, hopefully, a lot of times the vendor will be on the detail. So it'll be pretty easy to, to find the vendor because like we, like we did, we could just copy and paste the vendor typically. Then we're going to go to Erica. Let's go into Erica. And this is going to be new. I haven't added Erica as a vendor. She is an employee. Uh, but we're going to set it up as a vendor here. So there's the 360. This is once again going to go to salaries and wages. So we'll pick that one up. I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to go to the add vendor. So I'm going to go to add vendor, select the drop down, go on down to the bottom, say plus to add the vendor. Then we're going to have the blue button in the upper right. So I'm going to select the blue button in the upper right to add the vendor here. And we'll put the Erica right up top. Erica Smith, save that down below. Then uh, once this has been saved, I'm going to close it back out. Go back to the first tab. Then I'm going to refresh the screen so the vendor will then appear. And then I'm going to go back down to the add vendor and we should see then uh, Erica here. So there's Erica and we'll go ahead and add that. So we'll save that. And then I'll check that off as, have been in, as having been included. So that's all the payroll type items I believe we have. So let's go back to the balance sheet at this point. And we're going to go back up top and update the balance sheet. Now, there's nothing new happening here. The checking account obviously was already included and uh, the other side is going to be on the income statement. So now let's go to the income statement. We will update the income statement and we should have then items that have been decreased from the payroll or uncategorized and going into the payroll. So then if I go into the salaries and wages, we should see those items that we have now included within it.
Uh, so there they are. So there's the items that we've included here uh, within that section. So and then we're just going to continue on, of course, allocating out these items until the uncategorized expenses are gone. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.